Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's take a look at the new Apple Intelligence Cleanup feature in the Photos app. So a new Apple Intelligence feature available in macOS Sequoia 15.1 and iOS 18.1 is the ability to clean up photos using AI. What this basically means is, is that you can remove blemishes and remove whole objects from photos using artificial intelligence to fill in the pixels with what is most likely to be there. So let's start here on the Mac. Here I am in the Photos app and I'm going to use this new cleanup feature on this photo. I'm going to go to Edit first and then I'm going to look at the top here and I'm going to see in addition to Adjust Filters and Crop, Clean Up. Otherwise, instead of seeing Clean Up here, you'll just see under Adjust, one of the adjustment tools is a Retouch tool. That's the old tool and it's kind of algorithmic how it handles the pixels and it's mostly for removing blemishes. This can actually remove entire objects. So let's switch to clean up here and you can see there aren't really many options on the right. In fact the first time you use this it's going to actually have to download this feature and then there will be a short time when it's actually setting it up. But once it's all ready you'll just see the ability to adjust size here. It's the size of the brush that you're using to clean things up. So now we need to remove items. Sometimes you actually see items highlighted that you can remove. But in this image it doesn't show us any. So we're actually going to click and drag to get rid of things. Let's try an easy one first and get rid of the branch from a tree behind me as I was taking this photo. So I'm just going to drag here like that to show photos what it is I want to get rid of and you can see it gets rid of it. I can use Command Z to undo very easily. Let's try a smaller size here and I can more specifically choose what I want and it will get rid of it. It's kind of a fuzzy area so if you don't perfectly outline what you want or maybe you take too much it will kind of figure it out. By the way, if you find these videos valuable consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support Mac most at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts and more. You can read about it at MacMost.com slash Patreon. Now the interesting thing about the brush size is it's dependent on your zoom level here. So for instance you can see the size of the brush there set it around 30. Now let's zoom in here and notice if I want to get rid of this person on the grass the brush size is about the same even though I've zoomed in a lot so it's actually covering a much smaller area. You can see how well it handles that particular object. Let's try this person here on the steps and it does a fairly good job there. But it's definitely not perfect. For instance, let's go over here and you can see this person standing here between the two pools if I try to get rid of them by highlighting them like that, watch what happens. You can see it actually changes a much bigger area. If you look closely now, this wall here of the pool doesn't make sense anymore. But I am zoomed in a lot. If I were to zoom out, you really don't notice it too much. You could certainly lower the size a bit and do it bit by bit like that and then continue and maybe get a better result like that by kind of working with it a bit. But you're always going to get more tools and more options in an advanced app like say using Photoshop for instance to do this. In the Photos tool you're just going to get this basic cleanup that's easy for everybody to use and works in most cases. Now some other parts of this is that you could still use all of the regular tools for editing here which includes this button here that allows you to temporarily see the original by holding it and then releasing so you can kind of compare and see how it looks. You also can always revert to the original. Photos is a non-destructive editor. So any adjustments, filters, cropping, all of that, you can always go back to the original photo that's there. It never replaces it with your changes. So that's nice to know. You can make changes like this, maybe export it to post online or print it out, but you could always then go back to the original photo when you're done. If you've made other changes to the photo, like let's go into adjustments here and adjust the colors like that. Then go into cleanup and then use the cleanup tool here. You can of course use undo to undo those last two steps but you can also reset cleanup and you can see it just resets that. It doesn't take away the adjustments as revert to original would. Now sometimes when you go to edit a photo and you go to cleanup what will happen is some of the objects will be identified as things you may want to remove. Notice here that my backpack and the water bottle are both glowing. So I don't actually have to use the brush at all. 
as long as I'm in cleanup mode here, I can just click and it will remove that object. So you can see how I was able to easily remove those two objects just by clicking. If I want to remove more, I can simply brush just like before. Now let's see how far we can go with this. Here's another photo. And I like this photo except that there's this light pole here casting a long shadow. Would be neat to be able to see it without that. So we're going to use the cleanup tool and let's first try to get rid of the shadow. So I'm going to use the brush here and I'm going to brush over the whole thing and let's see how it does. It does a pretty good job there of getting rid of the shadow. Now let's get rid of the base here and we see it does a good job of that too. But the pole is still technically there. It's behind the branches of this tree. Let's move in a little bit and get rid of the entire pole. So I'm going to just highlight this whole area like that and then let's see how it does. It does a pretty good job. It really kind of looks like the pole never was there. It's not perfect but if I want to have a nice picture to look at or maybe create a desktop wallpaper or something like that then this is perfectly fine. It works really well. But it could also be used to get rid of blemishes just like the previous retouch tool did. So as an example here instead of showing somebody's face let's actually uh, look at a pumpkin here and let's see if we can get rid of this blemish on the pumpkin by using the cleanup tool. So I'm going to select that like that and you can see it does a fairly good job of getting rid of that. I can continue to work with it a little bit here to make it even better. So the same would work on various objects including say skin. Now let's take a look at doing it on the iPhone. It works in a similar way. I'm here in the Photos app. I'm looking at an individual photo and I'm going to tap on the editing button here at the bottom. And you can see now that I'm in editing mode I've got tools at the bottom here and as long as I've got 18.1 and my iPhone is capable of using Apple Intelligence which would be for instance the iPhone 15 Pro models or the iPhone 16s then I've got the cleanup tool here at the bottom. And I can use the cleanup tool here. It's going to download it if it needs it and then go to prepare and now once I've got that I can use it in the same way. So I can for instance get rid of this up there if I want and I can move in here. Let's go really close and look for these people here and I can get rid of them as well like that. I can do the same here. I've got undo right here or just reset the entire thing to take away all the changes. And just like with any photo you can revert to original. It always has that original there. So that's how it works. It's a pretty simple tool. But I do suggest that you try it now. Get it downloaded because that may take a few minutes depending upon your connection and play around with it remembering that you can just revert to the original photo when you're done. So there's no harm in testing it out in some photos you have now so you know how to use it when you need it. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.